Hey everyone, um, today in class we handed out supplies and got our portfolios. Um, if you were not at, in school today, that's totally fine. We will get you the supplies when you come back. Um, I have most likely emailed you asking if you have some supplies you can use at home. Um, if not, I will try to get around to that soon. Um, just making sure I'm got everybody <laughs> accounted for. Um, but if I don't email you, you can send me an email. Um, but the things that you'll need for the next couple class periods are a pencil, um, some blank paper. If you don't have blank paper, notebook paper is okay, but blank paper is going to be a lot better. And then colored pencils. So those are the three things. If you have that at home and you are learning from home, it will be awesome if you have those. But if you don't, um, let's talk about it and we can accommodate our lessons for you. Um, so today, the other thing that we did, and you will need to do this before you come back, is create our own personal logos. Uh, we talked a little bit about logo design. I'll talk to you about it um, through this PowerPoint. But we are going to use these logos on our portfolios. So they get taped to the portfolio. OK, so when we think about logos, a lot of people in class brought up really popular logos that we often see every day, like the Walmart logo, um, Nike. A bunch of people said Nike. Uh, we know the Target logo because it is an actual Target. Um, I think off the top of my head, we know Adidas, so a lot of sports brands are really popular. Um, we're going to talk about what makes a good logo. So all of those logos that I just listed are pretty successful because we, as a society, recognize them right off the bat. Like when you see the Nike switch, you're like, Nike, you immediately can recall it. You know what Nike is, you know what they make. They make shoes and athletic wear. Um, so that's a really good example of a good logo. So they're just more than, they're more than just like a pretty image for customers to look at. The logo kind of becomes the face of the entire brand. It becomes a symbol. It's very symbolic about how people feel about the company. And we have here an example of a restaurant's logo. So if you're on Google, looking up like restaurants near me because you want to go out to eat, but you don't know where. And you see this restaurant's logo come up and it's just kind of like gray and bland and the font's not really cool. It's a little bit boring. Um, that logo may deter you from wanting to go to that restaurant. So, um, you know, they kind of, that, that restaurant's lacking in good representation of their brand and like what their restaurant has to offer. So that is something that like kind of subconsciously from a consumer's point of view, we may not end up wanting to go to that restaurant just because of their logo design. So logos can be really, really important. Um, so there are a couple ingredients for a good logo design. Number one, it should be enticing, um, especially if you get into like graphic design um, or you're a designer, you will often design for a target audience. This example right here, um, so we're going to assume that this person is a single man in his 20s. He works full time, high school educated. He loves sports and he's really adventurous. So when we look at these two logos, we might recognize that this one over here probably wouldn't interest this person. Um, it's a Comic Sans font, which we often kind of equate to um, childish kind of like it's, a, it's kind of a childish font. Um, and then this image right here doesn't really look fierce. But on the other hand, this one right here, this Red Bull logo, uh, this guy would probably be like, oh, that looks really cool. It's very powerful. Um, it looks really intense. The colors, you, do you see like the difference in how the colors are used here and here? Like the, in this one, the colors still look really playful, but the positioning of everything on this logo really makes it look intense and powerful. So this Red Bull logo does appeal to this guy who is the target audience. Um, so to kind of summarize that, we 
want to make sure that we are in like aware of who we're making our artwork for um and we want to kind of approach it in a way that makes the audience the person that's looking at the artwork excited and willing to look at it and maybe they maybe this guy sees this and he doesn't know what red bull is yet and he's like i have to know because i you know i'm really interested in this logo um, the same can kind of apply to the artwork that we make so the next one is to be unique so this brand has it's a global brand which means that they probably um exist on a global level like they have a company they have different locations all over the world um so they've used a globe that's not really like it does represent something about them but it's not necessarily creative or unique um, and i know we talked about creativity in one of our last classes and this is just kind of like an obvious answer to a question it's not very thoughtful um, it's not very creative in that way and the same with this one they're an air, air airline company they've used a picture of an airplane cool that makes sense but not very creative okay so when we are creating a logo we want it to be timeless so companies will often try to avoid trendy fonts and design elements this one you know this brush script kind of looks like it's maybe from the early 2000s and this maybe looks like it was made on microsoft word um, also in the early 2000s so now we look at this and we're like oh that's not really cool maybe then it would have been cool because 3d lettering and stuff was really popular um, in that way but now we're like oh that's what my you know my mom likes that but i don't like it <laughs> you know when stuff isn't really trendy anymore but on the other hand we have nike and we have coca-cola and we you know these are two brands that are really popular most people know about them and they have kept the same branding pretty consistently um, through their whole time span of existing um, and it works because you know the coca-cola font like this logo it's very unique it's very original they don't often have to change it because it really isn't tied to a time or a place and the same with nike this the swish is just so simple that they're able to keep that um, probably forever. Okay, so ingredients that make a great logo design um, being new. So you can strive for boldness. I know, you know, when you see the MTV logo, um, it's very unique. It's very bold in its design. It catches the eye and we all know what MTV is. Um, don't follow trends and create them. So the Girl Scout logo, I think is a really cool representation and airbnb right here so they have created their own kind of method of making a logo they haven't really copied any other idea um, and it makes them successful so logos are usually very simple they don't have a lot of visual information um, it typically like when you see hbo's logo it's just three letters the o is a little bit decorative I love New York. This one's really popular, just the heart and the text, and that's it. And they both work and they're very universal. Um, they're easy to spot. So simplicity, the less information um, that it has, the better with logos specifically. Um, they are just, they're also really tuned into what their colors say as well. So in I Heart New York, the heart being red really makes the logo pop, but the rest of it is very simple. Um, so you want consistency. Apple's symbol represents knowledge. Um, Burger King, they've got a hamburger in their logo. Um, I actually didn't even recognize that until today. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, so they need to have correct balance. Um, we will talk about balance some more in class, but if we look at Microsoft's logo, you can kind of see the visual weight that this has like this little image and then the word microsoft they both kind of visually um, balance each other out like my eye really isn't drawn to stick on one place it kind of moves with the the image 
Um, also, the design is centered. That's what these arrows mean. The design is like centered in the middle of the page. So this is a very balanced design. Um, this company, however, kind of crazy. Um, our visual weight is kind of landing up here because these bubbles, um, you can see, so these arrows on this page are very equal and symmetrical. Here, we got a bunch of arrows like just everywhere and it's very unbalanced and I don't know where to look at. <laughs> so we want to think about how we utilize our white space around our logo. Shapes can also be really important when it comes to logos. Um, when you have such a simple design, you'll often need to think about the shapes that are included because shapes can represent things subconsciously. Like we might not immediately recognize that, but a shape can give us kind of a, a first impression or it can have like an emotional response for us. So this company uses the circle Circles can represent community, unity, and completeness. Um, I think this is J.C. Penney. They use a square that represents balance, professionalism, and security. And then we have Adidas. They use a triangle shape, and that can represent power, masculinity, and stability. So we also can display or convey the right emotions in our logo designs. Um, you know, we all know Disney, it'd be really weird if Disney's logo had this font, because that's just kind of, it's elegant and dignified. It's very professional. Um, but the Disney font is very fun and creative. And we know that Disney is a really fun and creative company. Um, they make a lot of movies and, you know, amusement parks and all of that is very fun. And their logo definitely represents that. Negative space can be really important in logos too. We went over, we looked at the FedEx logo last week, but if you look between the E and the X, there's an arrow. It's kind of like a genius little addition from whoever made this logo. Um, the USA logo is pretty cool too. They use the negative space to create an S. So there's not really anything drawn there, but they used the U and the A to make another letter. Okay, so just like shapes can reinforce the message, um, color can too. These are some examples of how different colors convey different messages. You can focus on color in your logo if you like, um, if you feel like there are colors that represent you um, or something that you're trying to get across. Like if you really like nature and you go out every weekend and you go hiking, um, maybe you would wanna make your logo green because that means natural, ethical, and effluence. Um, so we have yellow, um, Cheerios, probably, you know, cheerful. We want to be cheerful in the morning, optimistic, and smart. Um, and Cheerios really, I don't know if you've seen a Cheerio commercial, but it's always about heart health and being healthy and active and awake in the morning. So that makes a lot of sense. Okay. So good logos are usually adaptable. This just means that you know we can see it really big on our screen or really small on our phones and it still is pretty much the same like there's no real change in it we can glance at it and know what it is um this was kind of fun i learned this today with my class this morning um amazon so this means a and then the arrow goes to z so it's they have everything from a to z <laughs> I also think it's a smiley face maybe, but I need to confirm that one. Okay, so here's the project. You are going to design a logo that represents you. You're gonna use the artistic thinking process. This is what we talked about in class last time. Um, and your logo will be put on your portfolio. It needs to be creative. It needs to be original. Um, think about yourself and you know what you would put on a logo to represent yourself. The artistic thinking process is right here if you need a refresher. Um, the first thing you should do in, is sit down and think about what you wanna make. Think about your personal experience, <clears throat> um, how you can be self-expressive. I have some other materials you can look at if you want some help looking for inspiration. Um, after that, you'll need to work on development. Make a few sketches of your logo, mess around with the placement, 
and like the balance of your logo. Um, make sure you're happy with what everything looks like and where it is. And then you can go ahead and create it. Um, we, in class, we used our colored pencils and we used regular pencils. So we sketched it out and then colored them in. Um, the colored pencils are totally optional. If you think black and white is a really good um, kind of concept for your logo, then go for it. Um, yeah. So that is pretty much what we did today. And I will show you these documents really quick. I will upload these to our classroom. So if you want to research this more because you like these ideas, um, you should totally do that. Um, so we have the psychology of logo design. This just explores the psychology of shape a little better. Um, so if you're interested in, you know, what curves and diagonal lines mean, any of this stuff, and you want to put it in your logo, you should look at this worksheet. The other one is the psychology of color. So it's kind of the same thing, but what different colors usually mean. And you can read through this if you're interested in that. I would recommend looking at that one if you're gonna use your colored pencils. And then the last sheet, this one's kind of fun. If you want some more examples of logos, um, it goes into the um, history behind all of these logos. So you can read about why the New I Love New York logo happened. Um, this IBM one is really cool because it shows all the changes from 1889 to 2018. It's a pretty long time. And then the London Underground, pretty cool. I don't know, I really like this worksheet. I thought it was fun. There's the original Target logo. That kind of looks like it could work now though. <laughs> you think that, that font's really popular. The Apple logo, isn't that wild? That was the first Apple logo. I did not know that until today when I was looking at this. Yeah, so those are some resources for you, but um, feel free to, where am I at? There I am. Feel free to um, contact me if you have any questions. Um, I will be, these are the supplies everyone got today, and I will get those to you when you come back, or I will figure out an alternative way to get you your supplies. <laughs> if we need to. Um, so don't worry about that. Right now, all you'll need is colored pencils, if you have them at home, a regular pencil and some paper. Um, if you don't have access to any of that, just email me and we will figure out an alternative way to make your logo. All right, so let me know if you have any questions and I will see you next class.